What's up everybody, I am John from A Guy In His Games and let's talk about Devil May Cry 5. I'm going to share my, my first initial impressions of the game, having played it, and uh, we'll go from there and talk about some enemies that show up in the game, uh, some of the story elements. So this video will have a few spoilery kind of bits in it, but you know, I'll let you know before um, I get into spoilers. Now before we go any further, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Resident Evil 2 remake. Now before everybody kind of rolls their eyes and thinks I'm going to be talking about Resident Evil for hours, um, I'm not, I'm just going to say this. Because Resident Evil 2 Remake was such a fantastic Resident Evil game, a lot of other games can't really come close to that. And the hype I have for like a new Resident Evil game, especially a good one at that, um, is never really matched by any other sort of video game series other than maybe Metal Gear Solid. However, it seems like Capcom are on a roll at the moment and making up for past mistakes. We're getting an amazing Devil May Cry game straight after an amazing Resident Evil game. That sort of shit doesn't normally happen. We don't get like two stellar Capcom titles, you know, in the same year. But we are this year. And I can safely say that after my time with Devil May Cry 5, it is a day one. It is classic Devil May Cry to a T. The graphics are amazing, you know, because the team are using the RE engine. I've definitely warmed to the new kind of realistic uh, facial animations and stuff. And I'm going to say that they're slightly above Resident Evil 2's facial animations. That's one thing I will point out. You know, the voice acting's on point. Like, Nero has definitely been given like a personality boost let's just say that he's a lot more kind of dante-ish in some ways and he throws one-liners and quips at the enemies as well as like the bosses and stuff um the the goliath boss battle let me just talk about that quickly to actually play through it is is amazing like to watch it it's cool and all but when you actually take part in the boss battle it's it's fucking incredible like goliath just throws his weight around he smashes through walls the scenery seems to be like fully destructible because at, at points he'll just like pick up bits of the scenery and throw them at Nero and I think that's one of my my kind of um my favorite things about this Devil May Cry is that like nearly everything in the kind of game world other than say buildings and stuff you can kind of destroy you can smash up cars uh destroy tables like there's so much kind of destructible scenery and it just adds to the game world and the actual location of Redgrave City is is impressive like it's kind of surreal because you know I I'm from London originally and there's loads of kind of parts in London, especially like Piccadilly Circus, have been, you know, used as inspiration for Redgrove City. And police cars or the, the ambulances are, are London inspired. And um, as a Londoner, I can be very nitpicky when, you know, a game tries to recreate like London in some way or, you know, maybe a film, something like that. I can be very, very nitpicky. Um, but what I'm seeing here, it, it's kind of like inspired by London. But also, it's it's its own thing. And yeah, it works. Now, how does the game play? Well, it kind of plays a little bit like DMC4, or at least when you're playing as Nero. Uh, it's fast, it's fluid. The, the frame rate's totally fine. I didn't have any issues with it. You can still charge up the Red Queen for a more powerful strike. And Nero still has his fire armor choice, which is the Blue Rose, which you can charge up also. Now, like I said, Nero does play a lot like he did in DMZ4. You can still pull enemies towards you with your Devil Breaker and unleash a flurry of combos in midair onto them. And you still have that classic kind of you know, two strikes, then wait a little bit, then strike again kind of combo system that they had in all the other Devil May Cry's. The one thing that switches up combat though, and, and that I think is a great addition, is Nero's Devil Breaker. So, Nero loses his Devil Arm to maybe Virgil, maybe not Virgil, we'll talk about, about that in a bit. Um, and yeah, so he loses his Devil Arm, and Nico, his partner, uh, makes a new arm for him, which is the Devil Breaker. Now, first, I want to say that the Devil Breaker can be destroyed. Um, it can run out, basically. You can use this kind of uh, get out of trouble move, and it will completely destroy the Devil Breaker. But you can keep picking up Devil Breakers, you know, within the game world as you progress. And it can come with different attributes as well. So you can pick up certain Devil Breakers that are, like, slightly different from each other. Um, one can have this like laser beam that you can shoot out of it and another one can you know have this like rocket arm sort of thing a bit like Metal Gear Solid uh, V the Phantom Pain but 100% more stylish than that games so yeah like there's all kinds of these these different attributes you can upgrade your devil arm as well let's talk about the upgrading system and how that works so the upgrading system is very similar to previous Devil May Cry games but it's done via the the Devil May Cry van which Nico drives and at halfway points when you're running through levels you can actually stumble across these red telephone boxes Boxes, which are like these classic telephone boxes from uh, like 70s, 80s era London. They don't really exist too much in today's London, but there is a few of them here and there. But um, yeah, you can call up Nico, she brings the Devil May Cry van, and then you can upgrade, you know, your weapons or 
buy new skills. The way you buy new skills and upgrade your, your weapons and, and items is uh, with red orbs and in much the same vein as any other Devil May Cry game, that's your currency. And you obtain these by either laying waste to loads of enemies or beating bosses. So any Devil May Cry fan is going to feel right at home here. You know, it's, it's business as usual and they haven't changed too much. It's not too much of a drastic change. That's what I'm trying to say. And of course, the main thing about any Devil May Cry game, for me anyway, as a player, is uh, how stylish you can actually be during combat and the ranking system that, that rates how, you know, how well you've done in combat with how many cool moves you performed and how many times you've kept an enemy in the air and then, you know, destroyed him. Which leads to you getting more red orbs, maybe some health, and then eventually, you know, adds up to your, your total score at the end of each chapter. So, overall, I'm going to finish off this particular part of the video by saying that the Devil May Cry 5 demo was outstanding. Um, it's whetted my appetite for the game after playing this demo. I'm getting this game like straight away. I need to, to play this game. Okay, so I've given you my initial thoughts and opinions on the demo having played the game for myself, but let's talk about, you know, stuff that isn't to do with the demo and is just overall like details, uh, leaks, you know, trailers, characters, enemies, you name it. So first I want to talk about the enemies and there are going to be some spoilers. So this is your first spoiler warning. Um, I'll talk about the M the Impusas, I think they're called. They're your typical kind of grunt enemies. They're not very hard to take on, but they can swarm you. You have the Impusas, the Red Impusas, which are basically like a bit more tougher versions of the Impusas, and they carry a lot of orbs within their kind of sacks. Um, you have the Green Impusas, which are like flying versions, and they can also like power up regular Impusas. So you kind of have to take them out first and then work on the, the normal Impusas. Then we have the Impusa Queen, which I don't think I got to see during the demo, but yeah, she's just, she's the, she's the big bitch of them all. Uh, I did get to see the spiky tentacles. They're the next ones I want to talk about. They just kind of erupt from the ground and you can, you know, you can slash them and they give you red orbs. They don't take a lot of like hits. Uh, we have the Hell Kana, which are essentially the Hell Prides from DMC3 and they make kind of like a return to DMC5. So there's going to be more enemies that I'm going to mention that are actually from previous games. But yeah, we have the Hell Kana. Uh, we have the Hell Judekas, which are the next variant of the Hell Kanas. And I don't think I got to see them during my playthrough, or at least during my, my demo playthrough. So although they might have been mixed in with the Hell Kanas, I'm not too sure. But overall, the, the Hell Kanas are a little bit tougher than the Empusas. So uh, now there's a little note on kind of the page i'm reading it's from i have to give a shout out to chaos 2 frozen uh, because he says that the hells are named after the rings of uh Kokitus, uh, from dante's inferno so cana and tenora uh ptolemia and jadeca uh, and that means there's at least one more hell to be revealed so that's interesting so next we have the hell and tenoras and basically they're they're kind of like these enemies that i remember from dmc4 they're a little bit different. They are basically different enemies, but they're similar in some ways. Um, the Hell Antonoras are just basically these big bloated kind of pus bags that carry um, hatchets on each in each hand. And I'm thinking we'll get to come across them like midway through the game. Uh, then we have the Raptor Boys. Now the Raptor Boys remind me a lot of the uh, the lizard enemies you got in Devil May Cry and DMC4, and I think they're basically the same, but you know they've got a new lick of paint and they've got a new name, so. They look cool. Um, we have Chaos. Now these enemies have been shown off during DMC5 trailers, specifically the one where Dante like puts his face very close to them and their, their blades are like spinning and, and he gets pretty close to them. So those are those enemies. Uh, then we have the Red Raptors, which are just basically red variants of the Raptor Boys. Uh, but I'm guessing they're going to be a lot tougher. Now, the next enemies have me excited because uh, it's the Scissor Scythes basically making a return, but their new name is Death Scissors. They act very much the same way as the Scissor Scythes used to, where they disappear, you know, come out of walls and try and lop your head off with their scythes. So, glad they're making a return. Then we have the Bats from DMC3. We have a red variant of the Bats, which were uh, featured in DMC3, and we have normal versions this time around. So, that's cool. They, they spit fire and are generally those annoying flying enemies we usually find in like action games also I, I must point out that the the red versions are actually called pirate bats i'm just thinking if they work in the same way they did in dmc3 where you have to kind of like shoot them so they turn to stone and then smash them now like i said before at the start of this video um this is spoiler territory so by all means if you don't want the game spoiled up to this point then you know stop watching the video but for the rest of you let's move on so the next enemies are the scudo angelos they are a lesser variant of the nilo angelo enemy 
Uh, Nino Angelo is basically Virgil from Devil May Cry 1. It's one of the forms he takes. And it's looking like if this is Virgil doing all this shit, and he's kind of got this, this huge tree that's, you know, infecting uh, Redgrave City as well as supposedly the world, um, it's looking like he can give birth to, to Angelo variants. Which is interesting. Now the Scudos almost look a little bit like Kratos' devil form from Devil May Cry 4. So next to them we have the Proto Angelo. Uh, now Proto Angelo resembles Nilo Angelo down to a T. The only thing I would say is a little bit skinnier. Um, and of course he won't be as tough as Nilo Angelo was. Everything's leaning more towards the fact that Virgil is going to be the main antagonist for DMC5. And he is featured in this game because there's all these Angelo type enemies. And, uh, and you know he's Nilo Angelo so it just leads to me thinking these definitely in the game and the main antagonist then we have the baphomets which are apparently like the goatlings from dmc2 they're making a return so they look kind of cool and the last enemy i wanted to talk about um i've saved the the best till last is uh, an enemy making a return from devil may cry and that's the nobodies now if anyone's familiar with the nobodies they are absolute fuckers to take on and uh they would switch masks and grow bigger and then you know you'd they'd become like the enraged nobodies and they'd be tougher to kill if you got in a room with like three of them they would fuck you up not only that but even after you've killed them they explode so you have to be you know away from them or you'll end up losing health uh, the nobodies used to give me nightmares whenever I, I, you know, fought them in Devil May Cry. And the fact they're making a return means that, you know, this game is definitely sharing some DNA with all of the games, but also with the first Devil May Cry. So that's interesting. So with enemies out of the way, let's talk about Redgrave City and uh, some of the locations you get to explore. During the demo, I didn't get to explore all of Redgrave City, obviously, because it's only a demo. But uh, I have seen, you know, more locations in trailers and images and stuff like that. And uh, I think at one point you get to go to like a dockyard and there's this huge boss that you get to face in the dockyard. The demon realm looks to be making a return as well because there's, you know, there's scenes where Dante, Trish and Lady are, are featured in the demon realm. Uh, but overall, it has almost like a biomechanical feel. Uh, in some parts. There's actually a part during the demo where you come across this this gate, this locked kind of gate, um, and you have to find this key, and it's like something from that film Existence. Uh, it has all these tendrils coming out of it, it's this biomechanical type key, and you put it into this, this gate, and it opens up the gate so you can move forward. But yeah, it had a very strange biomechanical, you know, thing going on. And uh, it reminds me a lot of the end parts of the first DMC where you go to, you know, the demon realm and the, the fucking tunnels are moving up and down and stuff like that. So big fan of that. And it does link it more closely to uh, to the first game. Maybe it's because I haven't played a DMC game or at least a proper DMC game since 4. Or maybe it's just because that's the kind of angle the, the developers are going with is the whole kind of callback to all the older games, including the original. But yeah, for whatever reason, I feel like this shares a lot more in common with the first Devil May Cry than any other game in the series. So let's move on to like story, potential plot leaks, characters, and Virgil. First, I want to get the plot leaks out of the way. Now, you should take this with a, with a pinch of salt. Um, this plot leak that's circulating online at the moment might not actually be real and actually be like truth, but... They do say in the plot leak that Dante supposedly dies at the end of this game. Or at least this game's story. I'm not going to be happy with that. I play Devil May Cry because I want to play as Dante. And this whole passing the torch over to Nero or V type of thing will be a bit of a kick in the dick for me. I've got to be honest. Now I know that Dante's story has been covered throughout many games. But in Devil May Cry 4 he was a side character. Let's be honest it was more about Nero's story. And you either want to know more about Nero's story or you want to continue Dante's story. For me, I want to continue Dante's story with Nero being the side character. That's how I want things to play out. But if these leaks are true, then Dante apparently sacrifices himself in order to save the world and, and Nero and V, you know, and get rid of the big bad by, uh, I think he goes like full devil trigger or something and, you know, that basically destroys the bad guy but also kills Dante in the process. Now, like I said, take these, these leaks with a pinch of salt. This isn't confirmed, and I'm hoping that it's complete bullshit, but at the same time, it is going to suck if that's kind of where they're heading with the story, the ongoing Devil May Cry storyline. So yeah, I don't want to see Dante die in this game, please. Um, even if you end the, the Sons of Sparta, like, you know, storyline, 
let's just keep Dante kind of fighting more demons and stuff. We we can move away from the Sons of Spider storyline and how everything's connected and still have Dante as like a main protagonist. So next, let's pry into DMC5 story, at least what we, we know about it. First, I want to talk about Kirie. So Kirie is Nero's girlfriend. She was featured in DMC4 and she makes a, a very short cameo appearance in the, the trailer for DMC5 or at least one of the trailers where she calls Nero, you know, for dinner. Um, but you don't actually get to see her. Now, I don't think she gets killed and I don't think she gets kidnapped, you know, by Virgil in DMC5. I think she literally makes that one cameo appearance and then she's just relegated to being an off-screen off character, basically. Unless she turns up at the end of the game to give Nero a kiss or, or whatever, like, I don't think we're going to get to see much of her in this game, so. Let's talk about Dante, Trish, and Lady. I, I like their new motion capture actors. I like what they've done. Same with, you know, Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 7. They look more realistic. They give the character more depth, more life. Uh, the voice actors are making a return, or at least Dante's voice actor is from DMC4. And Trish and Lady are looking well buff in this uh, Devil May Cry. Now, Lady still sports her rocket launcher, and Trish still has the Sword of Sparta. I wish Dante would just take back the Sword of Sparta, stop giving it to Trish. Trish has got, like, lightning bolts and shit that can come out of her hands. She doesn't really need the Sword of Sparta, but anyway. But it is revealed that Dante gets his hands back on the Sword of Sparta, because you can see him, you know, using it in some of the gameplay footage that's been put up on YouTube. So let's talk about Morrison. Morrison is basically a character from the DMC anime, but he's been brought over from that to the games. And I think he's like Dante's booking agent. You know, he brings Dante all his missions and, and things like that. And I think he'll probably be featured in the beginning of Dante's storyline, maybe in the middle and maybe at the end. Who knows? But so next, let's talk about Nico. Now, originally, I thought uh, Morrison was actually Nell Goldstein and Nico was his granddaughter. But that's not actually true. Um, Morrison's just like I said, he's a separate character. And uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get to see Nell Goldstein, but Nico makes it apparent that the person who created Dante's guns, Ebony and Ivory, was the legendary Nell Goldstein. So it makes complete sense that Nico takes after Nell and she can create all these like swords and weapons and upgrades and fucking devil breakers, you name it, she can create it. She's super smart, super intelligent and super cute. She's very geek chic, smokes 20 fags a day, she has some of the best one-liners, but she's fast becoming one of my favourite like female protagonists, you know of Devil May Cry next to Trish and Lady. So yeah, I'm loving Nico. I'd like to talk a little bit about V. So I like V's personality. I like how mysterious he is as a character. Uh, the only thing I think might let this game down a little bit is his gameplay segments. The reason why I think that is because he's not as strong as Dante or Nero physically. So he has to rely on these, these kind of like beasts to help him out, these demon beasts. So he has uh, one that's like a jaguar and reminds me of the, the Jaguar boss from the first Devil May Cry. He has one that's called Griffin, that's like this bird that follows him around, and also like this, this troll type, like demon that helps him fight as well. Um, but while you kind of stand around, those, those beasts do everything automatically. You're not really in control of them, as far as I know. You can quote me wrong on this, and if I am wrong, go ahead and, you know, and call me out on it in the comments section. But as far as I could tell, V just sort of stands around and lets these these demon beasts like do all the fighting for him and then once the enemy's life has been drained you know v will go in and deliver a, a final blow to the enemy killing him that's kind of how i see the the gameplay for him and it's a bit weird because it wrestles a lot of control out of the player's hands especially when we've played as nero and dante and this whole like automatic fighting thing and, and watching as the the beasts take on the enemies while you know you can read like poetry from a book I don't really like that. I know they're trying to be unique and clever with it, but it's something that could potentially let the game down a little bit. Much like the, the backtracking sections of DMC4 let that game down, uh, I feel like V sections might let the game down a tiny bit. So they're just some of my worries when it comes to the game, but I'm not really clued up about V to actually give like a full-on opinion. It's just from things I've heard and seen. Uh, but overall, I still find his character interesting and... Yeah, I'm still going to find it interesting to play as him because I think it's still really cool that he does get to like control these or at least, you know, has these demon beasts help him. And I think that's that's pretty unique. So we'll see when it comes to V. Now, Devil May Cry 5 is going to be rated 18. I think it's a first for the series, I believe. Yeah, it's the first of the series. So it's going to be rated 18, and there is a reason behind this. It's extremely dark compared to any other DMC entry. Uh, when you're walking around Redgrave City, and you can see like a little child's been turned to ash, and they're still holding this red balloon, that shit's dark. Very, very dark. 
and this this game's tone is a lot darker than any other DMC games. Now the final thing I wanted to talk about was the story of DMC5 and realistically how it should play out. Now this is personally how I think the story should play out but it doesn't necessarily mean that's how things are going to go down when it comes to playing the final product. So I think Virgil is going to come face to face with not only his son but also his brother so Nero being his son, Dante being his brother and also V. Now the reasons why V wants Nero dead or at least he wants revenge on Nero are unknown at this point in time but I think it has something to do with the fact that V is a mage character uh, at one point Virgil was looking to get stronger, maybe he still is, and he could have easily killed V's parents who were mages or his brother or sister or something like that. And you know, that's why V now studies like those books and he can control the demon beasts, you know, it's through like his mage powers. And Virgil would have tried to take maybe his parents uh, or his sister or brother's mage powers, you know, to make himself more powerful. So that's where I think maybe V's story is heading. When it comes to Dante versus Virgil, they've always had that rivalry. So I think Dante just wants to put an end to his brother's like bullshit. So yeah, that's going to be a, an epic battle between the two. Because, um, you know, Devil May Cry as well as DMC3, we got to see some real head-to-heads with Virgil and Dante. So can't wait for that. And then we have the relationship between Nero and Virgil. Now that is a grudge match to end all grudge matches. It's between father and son... Uh, all Virgil cares about is gaining ultimate power and all Nero cares about is ridding the world of demons, much like Dante. So when them two come head to head, who knows what's going to happen. I do think that Nero cottons onto the fact that it's Virgil that takes the Devilbringer, you know, as he does it. Because um, you kind of see it in his face. But yeah, the, the Devilbringer houses uh, Yamato, which is Virgil's sword. And Nero gains that, you know, in DMC4 at one point. In one of the, the trailers for DMC5, or at least leaked footage, whatever you want to call it, uh, Virgil shows up to Nero's garage. He takes back the Devilbringer, or at least he rips the Devilbringer off of Nero's arm and turns the Devilbringer into Yamato, because obviously Yamato's stored inside it. Uh, he opens a rift to the demon world and he escapes through. Now, it's two things that Virgil actually says to Nero that make me think it has to be Virgil. It has to be. There's no question about it and that's the fact that he says i'm taking this back meaning he's taking back yamato and also the fact that he says i don't have much time as he opens the rift to the demon world uh, that makes me think that one obviously he's taken back his sword and two he is slowly becoming more and more corrupted and potentially turning into urizen now urizen and virgil might be completely different characters they might be completely separate from each other but i do think that urizen is virgil at one point during one of the trailers, because there's so many Devil May Cry 5 trailers, you have to bear with me, uh, Dante says, I get to see this with my own eyes and see if it's really you. Meaning that Virgil has acquired this ultimate power, he's corrupted himself and turned into Urizen, and Dante wants to make sure if it is actually his, his corrupted brother or not. So it's very interesting, I don't know if Mundus is going to show up or, you know, kind of anything else about the story, but... I do definitely think that it is Virgil and I think that Virgil is Urizen. So this is where I'm going to end it. I want to know if you guys are looking forward to this game. I am, after having played the demo, my you know my mind is set on getting this game and playing it from start to finish. You know, getting stuck into the Sons of Sparta storyline as, well as, as well as the awesome combat and gameplay that's been on show and that I've got to play for myself. I think DMC5 has a very high chance of being the best Devil May Cry game to date. I think it's definitely going to be up there with DMC3, Dante's Awakening, and the original DMC. And uh, I think it's going to be a more enjoyable sequel than 4 was, or at least for me, you know, from a personal kind of standpoint. But yeah, I want to know what you guys think about DMC5. Are you excited for it? Are you not? Uh, are you going to wait for reviews to come out before you buy the game? What did you think of the demo? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and slap that like button, as well as subscribe to the channel if you like the content that I'm making and, and putting out. And until next time, I've been John from A Guy and His Games, and once again, I'm signing out.